February 5th, UFC Fight Night, we have Jack Hermanson fighting Sean Strickland, the most controversial figure in today's MMA world, or at least on Twitter anyway. But before we get into it guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel, share it around guys, like the video if you do enjoy it, let us know all your thoughts in the comments below, and let's get into it. Alright, let's start with the, uh, the controversial figure, let's start with Sean Strickland. Let's scrap everything about his personal life into one side, because let's focus on the fighter, because he's brilliant. Lately, he's been even better than normal. He joined the UFC many, many moons ago, and in his debut, if you remember correctly, got a nice rear naked choke, which people forget he's a good grappler, based on the recent success of his striking and how he loves to spar hard, as you've seen from footage and talking about it, and whether that was a hard shot or whether he's just pissing about or whatever he's doing. To lately, Uriah Hall, great performance. Uriah Hall, questionable opponent. You can, you know, Uriah Hall is such a hit and miss guy. He can look phenomenal at times and had all this potential in the world and then just comes crashing down. Christoph Jocko was a great performance. Christoph at one stage was looking good in the fight, but the way Sean fights is he gets hit a lot. He likes to fight. I wouldn't say he's an athlete at all. I wouldn't say he's one of these guys that, like a George St. Pierre. George St. Pierre is not a fighter. He's an athlete that can perform at the highest level in a fighting, in combat sports. Sean Strickland is a fighter. You know, you've got people like Darren Elkins, fighter. You've got people like Diego Sanchez, fighter. All these guys, you know, you, you're not looking at them going, oh, that's an athlete coming over. You know, that's not Joaquin Buckley's sort of build, is it? Anthony Rumble Johnson, for instance. They're not, he's not that kind of guy. He loves to fight. He's a proper scrapper. He plods and he stalks and he lands pity patter the Diaz brothers style punches, 50%, 50%, 50%, and 50% turns into 60%, and when you're hurt, he ramps it to 90 to 100, which really, really is a dangerous way to fight for his opponent, because the opponent can take so much for granted. They're getting touched and touched and touched. Now, whether that's hurting them at the time, let's take Leon Edwards, for example. Leon Edwards dominated Nate Diaz for four and a half rounds, I'd say, one punch with a minute to go changed the whole dynamic of the fight to a lot of people going, well, you know, if this was on the street, all this sort of thing, if there was more to the round. There wasn't, but that's what I mean. One punch wasn't thrown with 90% pa 90 power, but all those punches added up until he got clipped with one. And that's what can happen in this. Sean Strickland is phenomenal at pity pattering you up and looking for that kill shot. He got the kill shot in probably his best performance was Brendan Allen to me. Brendan Allen's a, a really, really decent at mixed martial artist and, and Sean stalked him. Sean loves the jab. He loves kicking from a flat footed position. And by that, I mean his stance is completely square. He's not standing lead foot forward, twisting the hips. He just throws it like a normal average Joe would, but instead he has got technique thrown in there, but with his own Sean Strickland pizzazz, his own style which is super unique, almost you can't teach it. He's just going in there and feeling his, you know, he's feeling it out. He's throwing what he believes is the right technique for him. And man, is it working. He, he's on an absolute roll right now. He's only lost a couple times in his whole career. I think th two or three. Let me, let me check that. Three it was, Ponzinibbio, Zaleski, and Usman. I mean, two of those names, Jesus Christ. And yeah, he was obviously fighting a different weight. He's bolted up. He's a big dude. He's fighting big guys, and he isn't afraid to throw down. He feels his happiest. He's in a great headspace right now. He, he, he in his last interview, he's the happiest when he's in the octagon. He loves training. He's grateful for even being in the UFC, which is a great mindset to have. It's really nice to hear that from somebody. And you know, like him or dislike him, you gotta like how he fights. It's brilliant. Let's flip the tables then to Jack Manson because I remember seeing him with Veneta and Cage Warriors at a point and. I love Jack Commanson. When he came into the UFC, I was like, I wonder how he's going to do, you know? And he was a little, a uh, couple wins, one loss, a couple wins, one loss, until he kind of found that streak going. And he has, when he snatched up the one arming guillotine against David Branch, who can bloody grapple that guy, and bang. So Jack, for me, has a very unorthodox style of striking. And for me, I don't mean like a Dominic Cruz kind of interpretation of movement or a Nico Price kind of striking style. I mean, He's very himself. It's two guys that have their complete... If you played a silhouette of each guy, you'd go, that's Jack Comanson, that's Sean Strickland. And that's what I'm talking about. These guys are so unique in their own rights. That's what makes this fight really fun. So both guys really on a run as well. 
Um, we've got Jack coming off a win against Edmund Shabazian. Now, Edmund Shabazian, at the time, he lost to Derek Brunson. And then they paired him against Jack Hermanson, which I thought was a bit cruel because it's a similar kind of opponent. Jack Hermanson's grappling is his bread and butter. He's got very decent striking. He can stand and trade, but his money is the grappling. And the grappling is what we saw. You know, he we saw Edmund have a little more takedown defense, a lot more than Kevin Holland did, for instance. Like, when you go back and look and Kevin Holland's like, oh, I've gone and trained some, <laughs> some grappling. Prove it. Edmund did. Defended a lot, reversed a lot, did a little game on his own just wasn't enough. Jack Hermanson is the real deal in this division. He's a very dangerous opponent for a lot of people, you know. He went to take down Kelvin Gastelum. Kelvin Gastelum is, at one time or another, people had him as one of the best in this division. I don't know where people sit with him now. I think he's a dark horse always. I think he's a fat welterweight, but he's a tweener almost. He needs that, you know, 180 division or 176, that kind of division for him. He, he reversed Jack Hermanson, you know, used his power and his hit and, and his trips against him, got on top. What did Jack Hermanson do? Got a heel hook. You saw the, the jiu-jitsu game of him as well. And he loves a guillotine, he loves a heel hook, but man does he love ground and pound. That his hit pressure, his top game, it's almost second to none of this division. He is a real danger for a lot of guys in this division. And I think that's the path for, for victory here. So I think Jack Hermanson's got to take Sean down. If you stand and trade with Sean, you're in Sean's world. I'm not saying Sean's the greatest striker in the world, but he loves to get hit, he loves to trade, he likes to be in a grueling fight. Not saying Jack Hermanson doesn't, but it suits Sean's game plan a lot more. His team, no doubt, are going to say, you're going to make this grueling, you're going to defend the takedowns, you're going to punish him for the takedowns, you're going to have to land some knees, you're going to have to push him against the cage, you're going to have to rough him up. Jack's game plan has got to be, get this fight to the mat, implement your top game, and smash him into the canvas. That's essentially it, you know, Shabazzi in him. It's a lot easier said than done though. Sean's ground game is very underrated, which puts it in a little dilemma. I think Jack has enough to get this done. Sean, I would not be surprised if he won this. I would not be surprised if he stopped him as well with the way, way he's going. But to me, if he can't stop Uriah Hall, I don't see him stopping Jack Hermanson. Maybe a weird thing to say, <laughs> but I really don't. I think Uriah Hall's been stopped enough in his career that you could stop Uriah Hall if you want to. One more thing, it's a five round fight. Sean's gas tank going five rounds in his style, very doable. For Jack, he can get tired. If Jack needs to bank some rounds early on, because Sean, you know, every if he doesn't put him away in those early rounds with his ground and pound, if he doesn't get a submission going, if he doesn't do, if he doesn't get a finish, Sean, I think, can take these later rounds and, it, and, it, and it's quite dangerous here for for Jack in that sense. So, but I am going to back Jack Hermanson. I think Jack Hermanson is uh, is very underrated in this division. I think he's a dangerous fight for anybody and I back him. Let me know guys who you back in this fight, whether you think I've got this right, whether you think I'm missing something, which I'm always missing something, but I'd love to know it and discuss it in the comments with you guys. Thank you so much for the recent views and comments on the last videos. Thank you for sharing it as well. A lot of you sh shared it with me. Um, no disrespectfulness in, in the comments as well for, for a change. I'm waiting for, the, for it in this one. But thank you so much, guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.